Hey guys, Coach Kato here from uh, Icons Rugby. How's it going? Just out here on a lovely, uh, beautiful St. Petersburg day. Uh, it's probably about minus six. We've got another speed session with our uh, with my Zastava boys over here in Russia. And um, just, uh, I got hit up by a question by one of my uh, Coach Kurdo stable boys, uh, Angus Dean. Uh, you know, I, I, I loved working with this kid. He was fantastic. He had commitment, dedication, hard work. He was relentless for his results. He did what it took and just put in the work. And, you know, he, he'd come out of school, started working with him with his first year in Colts. Um, you know, was able to get some really, really good results on him. He ended up getting selected in, a, in the state side and, you know, pretty much fast tracked in his senior footy. And he reached out, and, you know, this is very, very common for a lot of young fellas. He reached out and basically asked the question of how do you transition from, I guess, schoolboy into Colts, which is realistically club based schoolboy, like Colts footy, because it's still age dominant is still schoolboy footy. It's played with the same styles. It's played with the same physiques. People will get chosen because of their their speed on the field rather than their actual ability to play top-line footy. And how do they transition into... Um, how do they transition that into senior footy where it does change a little bit, where, especially at a Premier Grade level and also a Q Cup level, you're required to be more like the NRL or Super 15 than you are at, I guess, a schoolboy or a, or, a, or a Colts level. So how do you transition? And I guess there's a few things to talk about here because one, you've got the physical nature, two, you've got the knowledge nature, and three, you've got the culture nature. So first, we'll talk about the physical. Now, the biggest thing I see as being an S&C coach is a lot of athletes concentrate on the now and don't concentrate on the future. And if you're a schoolboy kid in your last year of schoolboys or even, you know, year 11, I would look to put in a, say, five-year plan of what it looks like when you're 22. So that includes the whole transition from year 11, year 12, into Colts, into the first two, two years of senior footy. And that transition, that period, so how much weight are you going to put on? What, how strong do you need to be? What kind of athletic performance do you need to have? You know, what's your body shape look like? What's your rehab processes look like? And I would start implementing them early on, on a five-year plan, not so much worried about what do you need at 17, 18, 19, and 20. Because, you know, not making those rep sides isn't the be-all of end-all. Making them helps you 100%, but some bodies advance a lot later at 22 and fill out a lot bigger then than they do at 17, 18. So you'll be knocking your head up against a wall, psychologically damaging yourself, trying to focus on the short game where you should be trying to play the long game no matter what. So I would advise to seek out help. Uh, Manny does a great pathways chat around this. If you need to chat to me online, then reach out and have a chat there. We can definitely do that. But that's the first thing. I would put together a four, a three to five year plan on what does that look like? What weight you're going to need to be to play senior footy? How dynamic you're going to be? How fast you're going to have to be for your position and move from there? That'd be the first thing around strength and conditioning. And that will help you transition because when you arrive to that senior spot, you're going to be a lot more adapted to and ready for to be able to hand the physical constraints that is a huge step from Colts footy to senior footy, okay? Now, the secondary thing I mentioned there is how do you handle the speed of the game, like the game itself? So one thing everyone always says when they come into senior footy is, man, it's so much faster and so much more physical. And that really comes down to just the experience of the team to be able to perform at a higher standard and the knowledge so that they're not running around like headless chicken trying to play a game where you can literally know where you're moving to and move there dynamically to be able to perform a result. So I would advise you, if you're a schoolboy kid coming into senior footy, I would get out to as many Premier Grade games or Q Cup games as you can to watch them live and watch the guys in your positions to have a look at how they perform, what they do, where do they run to, how's their decision making, okay, what do they do and don't do. So that knowledge of watching that game in that context will help you then see situations at training and also on the field where you don't have to hit that ruck, you don't have to support that line, or you're better off supporting that line because normally this happens. 
or you're better off hitting that ruck because normally this happens. You'll see things. You'll see how other players play off other players. You know, if there's a guy who has an offload, they'll run and support the line because he's got an offload. You know, you'll see their communication manner. You'll see how they direct and body language and, and talk on the field. And I know as a senior coach, if I get a young fella coming through and he can talk on the field and he points and he directs and he, he knows his worth and his value, whether he's young or he's old, that to me is valuable because that is a guy who gets instruction and gives instruction. You're not right or wrong. We're not talking about bosses on the field or anything like that. We're talking about guys who know how to direct traffic, know how to give value to a team and know how to assert themselves because that in a senior footy game is so important to have guys who add value outside of the physical context of the sport. Okay, that's huge. So that will help you play at a higher speed. That will help you gain the respect of the guys around you. That will help you perform when you get that shot off the bench to do your job because you will understand what's needed. Now, the third thing I mentioned is culture. There's a huge culture shift from schoolboy into cult into senior footy. Okay, depending on your club and depending on your team will depend on how this originates. Okay, you have to make decisions that are going to align with your moral and ethical systems to make decisions to put you in the best team for you. Okay, just because it's your junior club, just because it's your local, doesn't mean it's the best fit for you. And if you go and do the things I've said before, so go out and watch Premier Grade and watch Q Cup and do all these things, you will see their culture. You will see how they handle defeat. You will see how they handle wins. You will see how they handle errors on the field. You will see how the coaches operate on the sideline. You will see all these things and you will get a feeling and an instinct that will give you a vibe to move into that team. Now, that's the first choice. The second choice is when you're there, you have to understand you're the young buck. Okay? You need to prove yourself, but you need to hold respect for the guys who've come before you. You need to earn your stripes. In schoolboy footy, you are given your stripes. In cults, you are given your stripes. In senior footy, you have to earn them, okay? And it doesn't mean going to training and shotting some guy on a blind side to try and prove that, to show off to the coach. Because in senior footy, the senior players hold so much power in, in selection and how you're going to survive in a team than the coach does. The coach might like you because you're a young talent, but if the senior players don't like you because you're a shit bloke, then you're gonna get rubbed out. Okay, so you have to understand and get to know them. So this comes down to a video I spoke about ages ago around relationships in rugby, where spend the time to learn from the guys ahead of you. You know, not just rugby. Don't always talk about rugby. Ask what he does for recovery. Like, how does he handle the combat of week in, week out, top line footy? How does he handle the relationship with his missus? How does she handle the relationship with her partner? Ask those questions because those are the things that come along that are going to underail you from your success path. It's the relationships you have, whether it's a boy or a girl or whatever, man, I don't care what you're into. But those relationships will derail you. How does he handle, you know, study? How did he handle getting a degree? You know, how did he handle having full-time work? How did he handle this? How did he handle that? Or how did she handle this? Or how does she handle that? You know, it doesn't matter, but so many people go, oh, how'd you get better in footy? How'd you get better in footy? And miss the fact that you still have a life and without your life, you know, hitting high marks, you're gonna struggle. And you see it all the time in the professional arenas, the guys who don't have their situations on lock end up getting to the top and bumming out because they can't handle it. You know, which is terrible because there's a huge support network out there, but they feel as though they don't have one. So I would strongly, strongly advise you to go and speak to these guys about life. 
you know, see what they're like in life. Get to know them about off the field so they can help you deal with that. So on the field, they like you and give you more time a day and more help. And that will 10 times advance your, your, I guess, establishment in the team to become a better asset to the group that when you get your chance, you will succeed. So guys, they're the three tips and three breakdowns. If you've got any questions around that, always reach out, hit me up, ask me coaches. I'd love to hear your opinion on this and these different things. I'd love to hear some stories from some players who've done this or failed at this. Would be great. Um, So guys, that's me. I'm out. Peace.